Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. True horror, more often than not, grows out of workday circumstances. Grows slowly, and at the start, almost imperceptibly. Without the commonplace quality of the soil in which its seeds are planted, the horror itself might be less shocking. This is a tale of two people who live rather pleasant, if ordinary, lives in the comfortable expectation of continuing indefinitely in this manner. As we shall learn, their expectations are not to be realized. Was it a tough day, Frank? Mm, Not too. It didn't bother you too much about your stepmother? No, not really. Except that people kept talking about it. I guess they all thought I should have gone to the funeral. Don't let them upset you. Oh, I didn't, Laura. It would have been sheer hypocrisy to have gone to her funeral, feeling the way I always have about her. I guess nobody but Bill Riley can understand that. He stopped into the office, thought I might be feeling some strain. He's a good friend, isn't he? Oh, Bill, you know it. He said a funny thing. Said I'd be lucky if she didn't come back to haunt me. Oh, that Bill. Oh, I don't know. It sort of gave me the creeps. Our mystery drama... The Intermediary was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Fielden Farrington and stars Francis Sternhagen. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The soil in which the seed of horror is being planted at this moment is a comfortable apartment in New York's east side, occupied by Frank and Laura Ellingwood. The seed itself is the death of Frank's stepmother, from whom he has been estranged for many years. Grief is not what Frank feels, and he is not so hypocritical as to pretend he does. Oh, that'll be old Jonas Clark. Who's Jonas Clark? Well, my stepmother's lawyer. He called me at the office this afternoon and asked if he could stop around this evening to talk about the will. You think she's left you something? Not likely. Shall I let him in? I'll do it. Hello, Mr. Clark. Come on in. Thank you. Uh, this is my wife, Laura. A uh, great pleasure, Mrs. Ellingwood. Won't you sit down? Thank you, yeah, I must admit, Mr. Ellingwood, I was somewhat surprised not to see you at your mother's funeral this afternoon. My stepmother. Mm. I considered it more proper to stay away than to attend. I find that very odd. I wanted to talk to you about your stepmother's will. And I find that very odd. She surely didn't leave me anything. On the contrary, you are Mrs. Ellingwood's sole heir. You inherit everything. I inherit everything? Mm. Well, with uh, what strings attached, Mr. Clark? You're not going to tell me there are no strings. Now, maybe not, Frank. Shouldn't you wait until you hear at least? Mr. Ellingwood, your relationship with your late stepmother is none of my affair. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then let me explain it to you. No, it isn't necessary. I'm not here to now, judge. Listen, I... anyway, I'm sure your fee covers it. Mm. My real mother died when I was only four or five years old. I could just barely remember her. Well, I sympathize with you, of course, but I don't see how my this bears My father upon the... remarried. 
less than a year later. Primarily, I think, to give me a mother. <laughs> yes, he gave me one, all right. Frank, I don't think you ought to go all through that again. You'll only upset yourself. And after a couple of years, my father was killed in an auto accident. She was driving. Mr. Ellingwood, if you're trying to blame your late stepmother for your father's demise... Blame. I... I wonder what made you think of Frank, that. Frank, Frank, please. So, she raised me. You know all about that, Mr. Clark. You were her lawyer after my father's death. She looked after you very well, as I remember. She was devoted to you. She owned me. Do you have any idea what it's like to be owned, Mr. Clark? Frank, let's just let Mr. Clark tell us about the will. It's a terrible thing, being owned. I was one of the possessions that she had inherited from my father. Mr. Ellingwood, even if what you say is true, oh, I can't... Oh, it's true. Well, even so, your stepmother has passed on now, and you've inherited her entire fortune. Which she inherited from my father. Okay, I want to hear about the strings she's attached. It's straightforward enough. Your stepmother's holdings have been placed in trust for you. In trust? You will not have access to the principal, only to the income which accrues from it. And what kind of strings are attached to the income? Well, there are certain uh, conditions, yes. You must live in and maintain in good condition the house and ground situated on Woodbury Road in Glennington, Long Island. Oh, Lord. Oh, well, now that's not so bad, is it, Frank? I mean, I've only seen it just driving past, of course, but it's a beautiful old place. I hate that house. I'd rather go to prison. I'd be happier. Bill Riley was right. One way or another, she'll never give up. The condition doesn't seem burdensome to me. You don't have to live there. Is there anything else? Well, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, the other condition is that... Uh, Mr. Ellingwood's present marriage continue unbroken. What? There is to be no interruption of your present marital status. Now, that's a little peculiar. I never met Frank's stepmother. She never even saw me, not to my knowledge. Well, she must have known something about you. <laughs> I assure you, she never would have made such a condition frivolously. <laughs> I've got it, Margie. Ellingwood. Hi, Frank. Bill Riley here. I understand you're a multi-millionaire all of a sudden. Divide at least by multi. You heard about the will. Yes. Uh, do we need to talk? I was going to call you. Uh, can you make lunch? I've got a meeting a little later on, but I can manage an early lunch. How about, say, half an hour? Good. Colucci's? Fine with me. See you there. What I can't accept is the condition that I must live in that miserable old house out in Glennington. I mean, she had no right. No, actually, she had. I don't say it's fair. I'm only saying that she had the legal right. Well, then the devil with it. I'm all right without a lousy money, and I won't live in a creepy old house. Yeah, that's a lot of money to throw away. Yes, I know. How does Laura feel about it? Well, she didn't grow up in that terrible place. She wanted me to take the day off and go out there with her today. She thinks I'm overreacting. I expect she's right. Uh, did what I said yesterday have anything to do with your attitude? About my stepmother coming back to haunt me? Hmm. Oh, no. I'm just thinking about living in that house again. I don't think I can do it. I remember when you lived there with your stepmother. I, I know what you're talking about. Well, and you're the only one that does. Listen, you're my lawyer. Can we break that will? I mean, can we knock off those conditions? The money was my father's, and... Well, to me, it doesn't seem right. Right and wrong don't always turn out to be the deciding factors, unfortunately. I'd have to see a copy of the will before I could say anything definite. All right, I'll get one for you. Maybe you should go out and have a look at the place, Frank. It might not look so bad with her gone. To tell you the truth, she doesn't seem all that gone to me. Maybe there was something in what you said, Bill. Maybe one way or another, she has come back to haunt me. Frank, is that you? Yes. I'm out in the kitchen. Okay. I tried to call you a couple of times this afternoon, Laura, but... Uh... 
You didn't answer. Oh, it was such a beautiful day. I just couldn't bear to spend it shut up in a stuffy little apartment. Hello. You look tired. Hmm. A little depressed, I guess. The martinis are all mixed. In the refrigerator. You want to get them while I put the steak on? Martinis and steak? <laughs> What's the occasion? Oh, I just feel like it, that's all. I had a good day and I feel like celebrating. Okay? Fine. What uh, made your day so good? What'd you do? I... I went out to the house, Frank. Out... Out to Glennington? It's so beautiful, Frank. I had to see it. Oh, Frank, it's like... It's like a dream come true. The... Well, just take the silver. Did you know there's a fortune in silver alone out there? Full service for at least 50? Well, I didn't count. All sterling, too. Well, why did you go out there, Laura? Well, I asked you to take me and you wouldn't. I just felt... Well, I know it sounds crazy. I felt drawn or something. I have such a feeling about that house, Frank. Mm, so do I. You no, know, there's a nursery at the back of the hall on the second floor. Did you know? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course you'd know about the nursery. Yes, I used to be set up there without my supper. I was ten years old before she'd let me move out of there into a real bedroom. We'll need a nursery someday, Frank. I mean, sooner or later we're going to... When we need a nursery, we'll get one. I wouldn't make a dog sleep in that room, never mind a child of my own. Now, that's silly. How can you be so... so unreasonable? There's a perfectly lovely old house just sitting out there, and you... Well, I'm not even going to talk about the money we'll be losing if you refuse to live there. Just the house. The house alone. I mean, really, Frank, it's sick to turn it down. Just plain sick. Well, then, I'm sick. And it's an incurable sickness, Laurie. You might as well face it. I cannot live in that awful house. Call it sick, call it unreasonable, call it anything you like, but recognize it as a fact. I cannot live in that house. Will you check the steak, Frank? I've lost my appetite. Oh, nonsense. There are five acres, five whole acres for kids to play in, trees to climb, and we could get a dog, and... Do you know there's even a kind of toy barn out there where we could keep a pony? And... And, uh, you'd better forget it, Laura. What am I supposed to tell the children when we have them? We're poor people because Daddy was afraid to live in the nice house his stepmother wanted to give him. We can't afford this and we can't afford that because your Daddy was... We're not poor people. I'm a good engineer and I've got a good job. We're not going to be poor people. That's true. We're never going to be poor because we're going to move into that lovely house in Glennington and we're going to have so much money from that trust fund that it won't matter whether you're an engineer or a, or what you are. I'll be damned. Why will you be damned? You want to know something really weird? You sound exactly like my stepmother. <laughs> Houses have long had the reputation of retaining the hard core of past tenants' personalities. Some essence that soaks into the walls, lingers in dark corners, hides in little-used cupboards, seeks out secret places where it can hide in wait for the thing that will one day come along and give it being again. Perhaps we'll learn whether or not the house in Glennington is such a place when I return shortly with Act Two. A man doesn't lightly say no to a large inheritance. And yet, that is precisely what Frank Ellingwood is prepared to do if inheriting means living in the house in which he grew up unhappily with his stepmother. Laura, his wife, has gone out to have a look at the house and has apparently fallen in love with it. As a matter of fact, unless Frank is imagining it, she has come back talking more than a little like his stepmother. You're being childish and unreasonable, Frank. It's a whim you're not wanting to live in that house. 
And I have no intention of letting you give up so much just because of a childish whim. No intention of letting me? I'm moving out there, Frank. Next week. I hope you'll come with me, but I'm moving in any case. I'd like to speak to Mr. Clark, please. This is Laura Ellingwood calling. Yes, I'll wait, thank you. Mr. Clark? <laughs> Fine, thank you. I just wanted to let you know that we finally reached a decision. Yes, that's right. We'll be moving into the Glennington house next Wednesday. Oh, no, Frank isn't really too happy about it, but I'm sure once we... Yes, that's the way I feel about it, too. Yes, please, go ahead with whatever arrangements are necessary. Thank you. Goodbye. He hopes we'll be very happy in our new home. That's what he said, yes. Some hope. Huh. You know, the place actually smells of my stepmother. Sort of a sickish, sweet, like, like, like spoiled clothes, if there is such a thing. I can't smell a thing. Oh, it's a scent she used to wear. You've done nothing but complain. For the whole 24 hours since we moved in here. Well, I believe I mentioned even before we moved in that I wasn't exactly fond of this house. But everything in it? Oh, that lovely little settee, empire or whatever it is. What can you have against a beautiful little thing like that? That's where I used to sit when she had company. My feet dangled. Sit up straight. Keep your hands folded in your lap. Speak when spoken to. I wasn't allowed in the parlor at all, except when she had company. Well, you are now, so stop pouting. That's weird. That was a favorite expression of hers. Stop pouting. Oh, for heaven's sake, Frank. Oh, Frank, look what you've done. You've got ashes all over this beautiful carpet. It's only ashes. They won't burn. Leave them alone. I'll take care of them. Move into a perfectly neat, clean house, a beautiful house, and all you do is complain and spill things around. Honestly, I just can't understand you, Frank. You don't seem to have any... any respect for things. I wouldn't have believed it. There. That'll have to do for now, but it's left a mark. Frank, if you absolutely have to smoke that nasty old pipe, can't you at least step outside or into the back hall or somewhere like that when you empty it? Yes, Moti. She always liked me to call her that. Moti. All right, Clark, I know I didn't have any appointment. I'm sorry to come barging in if you want an apology, but I want to talk to you. Well, it's not, not very orderly. I like to keep to my schedule. However, as long as you're here, why... Uh... I'm going to get rid of the furniture in that miserable house, every stick of it. Well... I'm going to redecorate. I'm uh, going to change the color. You can't do that, Mr. Who Hollywood? says I can? The will is quite specific. There is to be no change. The late Mrs. Ellingwood was very firm about that. <laughs> Why did you want me to come into the city for lunch, Frank? Is anything wrong? Yes. I, uh... Well, to tell you the truth, I wanted to get you out of that house. I don't like what it's doing to you. I wanted to get you out of it so we could talk. We could have talked at home? You don't see it, do you? Actually, I'm surprised that you showed up even after you'd promised. Well, I almost didn't. It's strange. It was such... A wrench. Just closing the front door and walking away. Laura, don't go back. What do you mean? Just don't go back. Stay in the city and go shopping or something this afternoon. I'll call Bill Riley and maybe he and Carol will be free this evening for some bridge or something like that. We could spend the night with them maybe and, and then tomorrow... Frank. I'll take tomorrow off and I, we'll go apartment hunting. Maybe our old apartment hasn't been rented Frank, yet. Frank, stop it. I wouldn't have come all the way into the city if I'd known you were just going to start this again. Oh, can't you feel the difference being out of that place? You said yourself it made a nice change. Can't you feel the difference in yourself? If there's a difference in me... I'm sorry, Frank, but you've put it there. 
You can't know what it's like hating everything the way you do. I know exactly what it's like. Believe me, I know. Well, then... Oh, he wants more coffee. No, nothing more. Thanks. I, I guess I'll be getting back. Laura, won't you try it my way? Won't you just give it a chance, at least for tonight? We... We can't, Frank. The will doesn't say anything about taking a night off, does it? What good would it do? It won't work, Frank. We're going to live in that house, and you've got to learn to like it. Well, I've gone over the will with a fine-tooth comb, Frank, and I can't find a hole. I know what it's putting you through, and I sympathize, but as a lawyer, I can't suggest a way out. It isn't point. just what I'm going through, Bill. There's Laura, too. What that rotten house is doing to her scares me. No kidding, I'm scared. How does she like the place? Well, she thinks she likes it. Bill, you remember what you said the day of my stepmother's funeral? That she might come back to haunt you is a stupid thing to say. Well, do you think it's possible for a house, the house itself, somehow to... Soak up the, the, whatever is left of a person after a person dies. Oh, I don't know, Frank. There are tales, you know. A lot of people will tell you that a lived-in house comes to have a personality of its own. I don't mean a personality of its own. I mean the personality of the people or person who lived in it. Well, there are such stories, but uh, I don't know of an authenticated case. Maybe you ought to come out to Glennington some evening. Laura, I'm home. A long trek, but I made it. Is it still raining out? Yes. Where are you? In the dining room. Did you clean your shoes? Oh, Lord. You want me to take them off and leave them out here in the hall? That's what she used to make me do. Oh, of course not. Just make sure you don't track mud all over the house. Oh, what a train trip that is. What are you doing? I'm polishing the silver. Can't you see? Well, somebody coming? I mean, we're having a party? No. Well, then, why do you have to polish all the silver? Well, because it's silver, Frank. I shouldn't think that would be too hard to figure out. Silver discolors if you don't keep it polished. But uh, if you're not going to use it anyway. <sighs> okay, okay. <laughs> What's for dinner? I haven't had time to give it any thought. You're kidding. Oh, no. Taking care of a house this size is not quite the same thing as taking care of a three-room apartment. So let's move back into a three-room apartment. Oh, don't be silly. If you're so hungry, go, go fix yourself a hamburger or something. Well, how long is it going to take you to finish the silver? I don't know. Ten minutes, fifteen, how can I tell? Okay, you finish the silver, and we'll go out to dinner. No, I... I don't want to go out, Frank. <laughs> oh, good heavens, go pour yourself a drink or something. I'll fix dinner as soon as I've finished here. You were never one of those dinner the minute you hit the front door men before? Well, not when we live ten minutes from my office, no. You realize how much time I spend every day on that train? I'm sorry if you don't enjoy commuting, but thousands of men do it every day and have for years, and I'm sure they don't make it all this kind of fuss when they get home, or the divorce rate would be ten times what it is. Well, that's a new word. I don't remember that word cropping up in any of our conversations before. What word? Divorce. Oh, Frank, try not to be stupid. And anyway, it's against the terms of the will. Well, I have to admit, it was a good dinner when we finally got round to it. Frank, wouldn't it be just as easy to hold the pipe over the end table or the coffee table while you smoke it? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid you'll burn the couch. Mm. Would you like me to go outside to smoke it? I'm sure that's what my stepmother would have wanted. Now, that's not necessary. Just be careful, that's all I mean. Thank you very much. You don't have to be sarcastic. Laura, would you put that knitting or whatever it is, would you put it down for a minute? I want to talk to you. I can crochet and talk at the same time. Crochet? That wouldn't be an anti-Macassar you're working on, would it? As a matter of fact, yes, it is. She was forever making anti-Macassars. Well, they protect the chairs and the couches. Put it down. 
I told you... Will you you put the damn thing down? All right. There's no reason to shout. I'm sorry, Laura. Laura, let's get out of this place. Now, Frank, if you just want to start that again... No, 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 no. I just mean go out for a while. Take a drive or a walk. Go somewhere to dance if you want to. Just get out. Get some fresh air. It amounts to the same thing. You've got an obsession about this house. I'm doing the best I can. I just want to get away from that clove smell or whatever it is. I I can't breathe in here. I want to get out for a little while. You want. Lately, it's whatever you want. You never think about me. You never think about our children. Laura, we don't have any children. The children we will have. You don't think about them or me or the future or anything but yourself lately. You think if you keep nagging at me long enough, I'll give in. Nag? I nag at you? If you're trying to say that I'm the one... Now, come on, Laura. We're going out. You may, if you choose. I'm staying right here. Oh, no, you're not. What do you propose to do? Drag me out of the house by force? I will if I have to, Laura. This place, it's unhealthy. Frank, have you lost your mind? You must be blind if you can't see it. You're a different person. I don't know you. I will not spend the evening or allow you to spend it sitting in this living room soaking up the the, the evil it's filled with. I'm not budging. Would you get out of that chair and do as I say? Frank, take your hands off me. I'll take my hands off you as soon as I get you outside where you can come to your senses. Frank! Now, come on! You're hurting my arm! Will you come with me? Stop it! You're hurting me! You're getting out of here! I will not! You... Will! All right, all right. I'm sorry, Laura. I can't tell you. I, I, I had to do it. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Just let me... I... L- L- let's get into the car and drive, Laura. J- just drive. And open all the windows. Let the air blow away the... Whatever it is, this house is drowning us in. I'm better now. You don't know how sorry I am. Yes, I know. I'm not just imagining it. I swear I'm not. That house is doing something frightful to us. To us. To you even more than to me. Well, I know you don't believe me, but it's true. I believe you. You what? I believe you. It was different somehow after I came back from lunch in the city with you. It it was angry. You mean the house was angry? No, I don't know exactly what I mean by it. Something, as if something were part of me and, and yet not me at all. It was very angry when I got back this afternoon. Oh, my God. I I kept getting smaller and smaller. The me part of me. I could feel myself losing me while it grew and grew. I could feel the anger even while a little pocket of me inside me knew I wasn't angry at all, but afraid. I'm... I'm losing my mind, Frank. Oh, no, no, no. Don't ever think like that. I I know what it is. Then I wish you'd tell me. Just so I won't keep thinking maybe I'm going mad. It's my stepmother. Your stepmother? It isn't the house. I was wrong about that. She uses the house, that's all. I don't understand. She's in there, Laura, in her house. Her house. They left a lot of my stepmother unburied. You're it. The thing that wants you as its living agent is what they left behind, unburied. Frank. When you're in that house, Laura, whenever you're in that house, you are my stepmother. Possession. The possession of a living being's essence by an entity which is inhuman or perhaps no longer human. Such possession is a thing people either believe in or not. 
But fact is not created by belief. Belief is much more likely to grow out of fact, so that belief is to fact much as smoke is to fire. Where there is the one, do not be surprised to find the other. I shall return shortly with Act Three. In an old house out on Long Island, a strange thing is happening. Frank Ellingwood's stepmother is dead. She was properly buried some time ago. But as Frank himself has put it, something of her appears to have been left unburied. And that something has chosen to make its presence felt in an extremely unpleasant way. It has entered the mind of Laura Ellingwood and taken charge. Where are we going, Frank? Into the city. Why? Where else is there to go? You said they don't want to go back to Glennington, spend another night in that, that nightmarish house? No, I suppose not. But I don't think she could do it to me again. What? Your stepmother. If, well, you know, if that's what's really happening to me, I don't think she could get control of me again. Forget it, Laura. If she tried it again, I could keep her out. I'm sure I could. I don't ever again want to see you looking the way you looked tonight before I got you out of there. I don't ever want to hear you talk like that again. You don't know what she did to your voice. I won't ever let you go back to that place. I'll do whatever I have to to stop you. All right. I will take a room and I don't know, whatever hotel has a room available. We'll get a good night's sleep. We have one coming. And tomorrow, we'll find a place to live. It's settled. That's what we'll do. All right, Frank. Uh, hello. Good morning, Mr. Ellingwood. It's 8 o'clock. Oh, all right. Thank you. Would you like me to connect you with room service? Uh... No, I'll call later if we want anything. I couldn't figure out where I was. You're in a perfectly safe hotel room where nobody, where nothing can get at you. What time is it? Eight o'clock. What are you going to do? Well, first I'm going to get dressed and so are you. Then we're going out and have an enormous breakfast somewhere. And after that, we're going over and find out if our old apartment's been rented. If it has... We're going to start looking for another one. Okay. Oh, why don't you go and have a talk with Jonas Clark? Maybe if you told him what happened... Tell Jonas Clark the terms of the will are invalid because the house is haunted? <laughs> You've got to be joking. Well, it wouldn't hurt to talk to him. It wouldn't help. I'm going to see Bill Riley. What's happened won't make any difference in the legal sense, of course, but Bill would at least listen to me without laughing in my face. I think the money's gone. I think we can just forget that, but I do want to talk to Bill about it. Frank. Yeah. You know something? Oh, I'm still sleepy. Why don't you go on over and talk to Bill first and then come back and get me and we'll we'll do all that stuff you said. Did you sleep last night? Oh, I I slept fine, but it's it's the first time in quite a while. I, I'd really like another hour or so. Well, okay. If I uh, get over there early, maybe I can catch Bill before he gets too busy to see me. I'll stop by my office, too, and tell them I won't be in today. That's a good idea, now. Mm hmm Oh, yes. That's a good idea. This is Mrs. Ellingwood in 1208. I wonder if you'd take a message from my husband... I don't know exactly how long he'll be out, but when he comes back or if he calls in, I'd like you to tell him that I've gone back to the island. Tell him I'll see him at home later in the day, whenever he can make it. Please see that he gets the message. It's important. Oh, and um, tell him I'm taking the car. He can come out by train. Hi, Bill. Uh, your secretary wasn't out there, so I came on in. Yeah, secretaries work an eight-hour day. Lawyers never sleep. <laughs> What's with you? You got problems? Oh, have I? It's up your alley, too. Legal alley or spook alley? Spooky. Man, you wouldn't believe how spooky. Try me. 
Well, it's been building ever since we moved into that damn place. But yesterday, Laura came into the city to have lunch with me. When I got home last night... Laura's obviously being used as an intermediary to get at you. Your stepmother has no interest in Laura. How could she? She's using Laura to get at you and, I'd assume, to maintain her hold on the house. My guess is that she needs that house. She can't function without it. You believe it, don't you? Frank, can I go out there tonight? I'm not going back to that place, and neither is Laura. No, no, no. I, I mean just me as a kind of uh, investigator. I'd like to see if I can stir up some sort of manifestation. Uh, would you let me have your key? Well, sure. Oh, only I think I left it over at the hotel. Look, I have to stop by my office, and then I'm going back to pick up Laura. Let me phone you. Hmm? I'll get the key to you sometime today. Good. I'm beginning to think we're on to something authentic. I don't know what good it will do you, of course. All I want, really, is to keep Laura out of that awful house. <laughs> Mrs. Ellingwood? Can you hear me? I've come back. I'm back here this time on my terms, not yours. I know what I have to contend with now, and I mean to contend with it. Can you hear me, Mrs. Ellingwood? I dare you. If you think you're stronger than I am, go ahead and try to take control of me again. Go ahead. I dare you. <laughs> you little fool. You silly, stupid little idiot. You try something like that again and you'll be good and sorry, I promise you. Sorrier than you've ever been in all your life. Answer, will you? Oh, will you answer the phone? Yes? Who is it? Laura? Where are you? At the hotel. The clerk said you... Never mind what the clerk said. I want you out here. Now. Do you understand? Laura, what, why did now. you... Now! Do you hear me? Now! Riley speaking. Bill, this is Frank. Oh. Something's happened. Are you free right now? Well, I... I Laura I... went back to the house. She left the hotel while I was with you, I guess, and, and she's back out there now. I talked to her on the phone and... and... Oh, God, Bill. It was that awful voice. Okay, okay. I, I'll leave right away. Now, where shall I meet you? Penn Station, I guess. Laura took the car. We'll use my car. Are you at the hotel? Yes, I'm at the hotel. Well, wait out front. I'll pick you up there. Laura? What are you going to tell her about me? Laura? Tell her what? Laura knows you. If it's Laura, I don't know how much access your stepmother will have to Laura's memory. About time, too. Who's that? Oh, Bill Riley. Laura... Why didn't you stay at the hotel as we agreed? I wouldn't have left you there if I... Oh, I thought... don't be a fool. Come on in. You too, Bill. Clean your shoes before you come in. Laura, you've got to get out of here. Oh, stop pretending, for heaven's sake. We all know I'm not Laura. What can we do, Bill? It's the house. She can't do it, I'm sure, unless Laura's here in the house. We'll have to get her out. Try it. Go ahead, try it. I got you out of this place last night, Laura. I'll do it again the same way if I have to. Not today, you won't. That was Laura last night. Today, it's... You couldn't stand against me as a child, and you can't stand against me now. Laura, we're getting out of here. You're just as stupid as you always were, aren't you? You won't understand a thing that's told you until you get hurt. You lay a finger on me, and I'll claw your eyes out. She probably will, Frank. It's not Laura you're dealing with now. <laughs> well, I have to... Try. <laughs> now, Bill. Bill, help me, will you? It, it, it's no good, Frank. She's, she's, too, she's too strong. Come on. Oh, you Laura. silly little boys. Oh. Both of you. Oh, come on. Uh, silly little boys. Uh, you may go now, Bill Riley. Uh, 
You serve no purpose No, stay, Bill. It's my house, not hers. Your house! Your house, indeed. It's not only my house, it's me. At that funeral, they buried a body. A body, nothing to do with me. This house is my body now, and it will stand for a hundred years, hundreds of years, with you in it, and then your children, and then their children, all doing my bidding. Do you hear? You'll do exactly as I say, all of you, generations of you. Can she, Bill? Can she do a thing like that? I, I don't know. It, it, it's... I'm out of my depth. You'll fill this house with children. I tell you to fill it with children, and you'll do it. And I shall rule. And I'll use this body of your precious Laura's until it grows old and useless. And then I'll take another from among your children. I'll live forever and I'll rule. Bill. Bill, what are you doing? The only thing left to do. I'm setting fire to the curtains. I'm burning this monster right down to the ground. Ah! Bill, for God's You want to save Laura? You heard what your stepmother said? The Help house me! is a body. Both of you! Are you blind? The house is on fire. Laura, we've got to get you out Help of here. Help me! Why do you just stand there with... I see. All right, we'll all burn. The house, which is me, your precious Laura, you and your friend Bill, who was too stupid to get out when he had the chance, we'll all burn. Get out, Bill. I'm not leaving without Laura. We'll all go. We'll take Laura with us. <laughs> you stupid children. You never learned, do you? You tried to take me out of here only a minute ago. You saw what Hit happened. Hit her, Frank. Hit and gouge. Oh, whatever. We've got to knock her out. Laura, if there's any of you, of you in there that can hear me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fool. Fool. Uh, you, you'll be sorry for that, all right. No. You, uh, oh. Laura. Laura. Oh, Lord, what have I done to her? You saved her life. That's what you've done. Now let's get her out of this place. <laughs> You don't know what it was like. What you were like. Oh, only it wasn't you. Oh, that beautiful house. That beautiful old house. They'll never be able to save it, will they? No, thank God it's gone. You know, I'm an arsonist. Are you going to turn me in? Oh, don't be silly, Bill. You saved Laura's life. More than a life. I know. It was an evil house. There was nothing fake about it. I thought I could fight her, but I couldn't. She, she, was, she was awful. And now the house is gone. Everything's gone. That old house never looked better than it does on fire. <laughs> Frank Ellingwood's stepmother, the unburied aspect of her, was either unspeakably evil or intolerably tortured. And who are we to say it was the one rather than the other? I'll be back shortly. The litigation involving the Ellingwood estate is still going on, and may go on forever. Frank and Laura live now in a slightly larger apartment in their old building. They needed an extra room because of Frank Jr., and they appreciate their happiness as people rarely do who have never come so close to losing it. Our cast included Francis Sternhagen, Ralph Bell, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The moment I opened my eyes, I knew this morning was going to be one of those... One of those days when I'd have to face that terrible emptiness again. That frightening jump between the real and the unreal. Because when the cold light of morning oozed through the dirty panes of the window in front of me, when I finally made sense out of the strange angles and unfamiliar shapes that formed my surroundings, I realized that I was in a room I'd never seen before. It was a hotel room, probably. There were always hotel rooms, foul-smelling boxes. But I was Joseph Vincent... And I didn't belong in a flea-bag flop house of a hotel. 
Yeah, I didn't belong in this cell of misery. I was Joseph Vincent, and I was rich. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> 